Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of a super budget full USB microphone kit. So today we are looking at this guy, the Tonor Q9 Full USB Microphone Kit. If you do want to pick this guy up, it'll set you back anywhere between $50 and $60. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to my Mac with the input gain set at 50%. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. I'm gonna get the neighbors called. The neighbors? The cops. <laughs> hey neighbor! <laughs> of course you are going to get the microphone. You get a USB cable that's around five to six feet, a foam windscreen, a pop filter, a shock mount which does not come with any kind of adapter and it has 5 8 inch threading, a boom arm that actually doesn't have a 3 8 inch threading but has a 5 8 inch threading so the shock mount will fit on this boom arm, and some documentation. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels a bit better than bad for the most part. That was hard to say. <laughs> It does have an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill, which does feel pretty sturdy and I wasn't able to bend. On the front of the microphone, you have this volume up and down rocker, which will control the microphone's gain, but unfortunately it does not have a very tactile click and it is rather mushy. Then as you move around the microphone, there is nothing else to be found, but on the bottom you will find the USB port. Next up, as far as the specs, this thing has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a signal to noise ratio of 97 decibels, a bit depth of 16 bit, and a sample rate of up to 48 kilohertz. Now I am moving around the Q9 to 90 degrees to show you what the off-axis rejection and coloration is. We will continue around the microphone to 180 degrees right here, show you what it sounds like from the rear, continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will rotate and end at the front. Now I'm about three inches off of the Tonor Q9 without the provided foam windscreen, and this is how it's sounding. And now I've put on the provided foam windscreen, and this is how the audio compares. Now let's go ahead and test the plosives. So please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I'm right on top of the Q9 to show you the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and this is how the audio sounds. One foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the Leap Gamers, now I am typing on the DAWs keys. Now I have the sample rate set to 48 kilohertz, and with an I.O. buffer size of 64 samples, we have a round trip latency of 9 milliseconds, or 3.5 milliseconds output. If we bump up to 128 samples, we have an 11.5 millisecond round trip, or 4.5 millisecond output. And if we jump up to 256 samples, a 17 millisecond round trip, or a 7.5 millisecond output. Now I have the microphone connected directly to my Windows 10 PC. I have my input gain set at around 80 or 85%. I am recording this into Reaper at 16 bit, 48 kilohertz, and this is how the audio sounds. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw the microphone in my box of doom to measure the noise floor.
when you decide to make USB microphones, why don't you include a headphone jack? Honestly, it's not that hard. 3.5 millimeters, zero latency monitoring, mix dial. Give us that. We need it. Dopes. <laughs> All right. I get no joy out of sounding like a bitter old man that hates absolutely everything, but I understand completely why this microphone kit is so cheap. But first, let's talk about the pros, and the first one is the price tag. It is just an insanely cheap entire microphone kit. And on that note, it does provide you with everything you need to start recording. The microphone, the shock mount, the microphone stand, the pop filter, everything. So you buy the kit, you're ready to start. And third, it is incredibly easy to set up. It was just plug and play for me on both Windows and Mac, which is always nice to see. And then as far as cons, the first issue that I have with this thing is the noise floor. It is just way too high, and it does have that very standard and common interference that you hear on the majority of USB microphones. Secondly, there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, meaning you get no zero latency monitoring, and also meaning you can't have computer playback through the USB microphone. Third, I personally prefer to record in 24-bit, and unfortunately this microphone caps out at 16-bit. And lastly, the switches on the microphone are very poorly placed, or the shock mount is very poorly designed, so you have to be very careful when you're placing the microphone in the shock mount to avoid pressing the buttons and screwing up your gain. Next up, as far as my overall thoughts, I'm surprised to say it, but on the electric guitar, I kind of liked it for rhythm, because it does lack a little bit in the low end which leads to a cleaner sound but when the lead guitar came in it started to get shrill and overpowering in the higher frequencies and just all around unpleasant so as an all-around electric guitar mic i really wasn't a fan of it but if you are just doing rhythm guitar i think it's perfectly sufficient then on the acoustic guitar, I did not enjoy this microphone at all. It was just way too thin and it lacked any kind of balls or body to it. So unless I absolutely had to, I would not be using this on that instrument. Then for singing, again, I unfortunately wasn't too keen on it for that application because I just think that the overboosting to the higher frequencies makes it sound fake and top heavy and just all around not fun to listen to. And lastly, for spoken word, I think it's tolerable, but it does have a very brittle sound, which makes it sound cheap, and it also suffers really badly from sibilance. And to wrap up, would I recommend this microphone? Unfortunately not, and I already know people are clickety-clacking away down below saying, This microphone's so cheap, how dare you say no, it's a cheap microphone, you're being too critical. And I get it. Because just like you, when I see a cheap microphone, I am hoping that it is going to be good and that it's going to be a diamond in the rough. Unfortunately, this microphone is not that. And at or around this price point, I think there are much better options like the Samson Q2U. You could go the Behringer XM8500 with the UM2. You could go the Neewer NW700 XLR with the UM2 around the same price. Or you could do the NW7000 USB. There are just so many other budget microphone options out there at or around this price point that I think perform better and would ultimately serve you better. So unfortunately, I don't recommend this thing. But if you did already buy this microphone to chat with your friends on Friendster or whatever, I think you'll be perfectly fine. But if you are looking for a microphone, I think you need to look elsewhere. All right, that's going to wrap up for today. So if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, I just threw out my shoulder. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want to support the channel and become one of these awesome people, go ahead and click that join button and become a member at the $5 tier. Hang out in the Discord server, link in the description, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.